it is indeed a pleasure to be back in Australia. <clears throat> you know, I, it's been a while since I've been here. Uh, I see a lot of uh, new faces, uh, older faces like Doreen that I've known for all these years. For those of you that, that I'm meeting for the first time, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I am from Texas. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you understand me? Yes. No. No. <laughs> a little bit about myself. I am married. Uh, been married to the same wife for 53 years. Yes. But you know... Uh, she caught me by surprise one time. Uh, she, I heard her telling one of her friends that she hadn't actually been married 53 years because I travel about half the time. So she's saying she's been married 25 years because I've been gone the other, the other half, you know. And uh, I haven't traveled recently. And when I got the call asking me to come over here, I had to kind of hold her to control her excitement about me getting out of town for a while, you know? <laughs> Leave her alone. She's retired, stays at home all the time. She's a retired probation officer working for the, retired from the justice system. She worked with juveniles that got in trouble uh, with the law. Uh, she and I have one daughter. We have three grandchildren. And we have one great-grandson that's five years old. And so, anyway, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a good trip. Uh, you know, she, <clears throat> as I was saying, was excited that I was leaving, you know. <laughs> uh, I don't know whether she'll be that excited when I get back or not, but, uh, you know, that, 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 that's something to look forward to, you know. And, uh, but anyway, I have a, a uh, long list of slides today and I'm going to go through them very quickly. Now, I don't know whether the organization here will make these slides available to you or not. I don't know that you'd have to take copious notes, but it's hard for me to be technical, and I don't plan to be technical today. That's not what you and I need. What you and I need is an understanding of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Uh, you know, now, Anna put that in perspective very well, I thought, in that... Uh, we have the vehicle to allow you to build a lifestyle and build a business that will allow you to do anything that you want to do, you know. And uh, the, when, I, <clears throat> when I hear Jerry Brassfield make presentations, he talks about uh, the same thing. But the one thing that he always emphasizes that I find to be very interesting is you don't have to be a scientist to be in this business. You don't have to be a salesman. Any, any person, male or female, regardless of education level, can be successful in this business. The other thing that I enjoy hearing Anna talk about when she's making her presentation, she says there's only one thing that a person has to do to be successful in this business. And she's staring at me because she doesn't remember what I'm going to say. One thing that you have to do to be successful in this business is talk, 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 talk. Talk to people. Talk to people. I'll tell you an interesting little story. You know, one of our largest distributors in the world is Charlie Bolton out of Africa. The first time I ever went to Africa, which was many years ago, he and I were going from one venue to another venue, we got lost. He did not know which fork in the road to take. So he flagged down a, a, a vehicle to ask the guy, do I go this way to this particular town or do I go this way? And that guy said, well, you take this route. Before he got back in the vehicle, he had given that guy a sales talk on, on, on golden products at that time invited him to the meeting, and the guy came to the meeting. Talk, talk, talk. So uh, I'm not a salesman, but so I want to uh, belabor that. But what I want to talk to you about today 
is an epidemic that we're facing. And it's not just here in Australia and New Zealand. It's an epidemic of the world. Epidemic in the world in which we're uh, suffering from chronic disease. Chronic condition, chronic disease that takes four out of five lives every year is these chronic diseases such as heart disease, cancer, diabetes, stroke, and chronic respiratory disease. We know that. Those facts are documented. And we know that they're not getting any better. The instance of those chronic diseases. You know, you could look, for example, like at chronic respiratory disease. Uh, and it doesn't take a super scientist to understand one of the reasons we have uh, more problem there, and that's because of our air pollution. You know, uh, our exposure to, to air pollution, uh, heart disease, we're just not eating right. We're not getting exercise. We're not stimulating the heart. <coughs> cancer. Again, cancer is, is uh, most commonly associated with extraneous materials, extraneous uh, components that end up in our diet or the air we breathe or the water we drink that is foreign, foreign, that's a hard word for me to say, but it is foreign to the body, and as a result, it ends up interfering with some metabolic reaction or some genetic reaction that ends up producing a uncontrolled growth of cells, which is cancer, uh, diabetes, uh, stroke, of course. Diabetes, I'll elaborate on that. But stroke, uh, again, has to do with, with lifestyle. These are lifestyle conditions. They are not conditions that we can't affect or have control on. These are lifestyle conditions. So we have to look at what we can do to correct these conditions. Look, for example, at diabetes in Australia. Now, what does that line tell you? It's increasing. Diabetes Type 2 diabetes is growing at such a rapid rate in every country that it's probably going to bankrupt the medical systems in almost every developed country. And you can see the tremendous uh, rate of growth of diabetes, a lifestyle condition, a condition that you and I can control if, if we take the initiative to do it. Diabetes in New Zealand. In fact, uh, New Zealand has had the fastest rate of growth in the world for diabetes in the last few years because what? Their lifestyle. What they eat. How they eat. You know, so diabetes is indeed a major problem. Obesity. Look what's happened to obesity in, in Australia. We don't have the last few years, but we, we got some projections here. But as you can see, those trend lines are going up. You know, when I was a kid in school many, many years ago, I didn't tell you in the beginning, but I'm now 74 years old. I should have quit this traveling years ago, but I had to please my wife every once in a while. Uh, you know, I, when I was in school, I do not remember an obese child except one, one obese child uh, in the school that I was in, and his nickname was Porky. Porky, do you, you, you familiar with that? The teacher called him, everybody called him Porky, but he was the only one in our school that was obese. Now all you have to do is drive to a school campus, sit on the street, don't look suspicious or they'll arrest you. <laughs> Sit on the street and watch the children come and go and see what has happened to the obesity in the younger generation. And uh, Gosh, that makes it even worse uh, to have young children going into midlife or going into adulthood that are already obese that have developed eating habits that are so bad that they have allowed themselves or their parents have allowed themselves 
to become obese. They are subject to these conditions that I mentioned earlier, heart disease, stroke, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I cannot uh, really hold the children blame for that. Think about it a minute. You have to hold the parents responsible for that. They're the ones that allows that to happen, you know. And I've got to get back on the subject. Uh, <clears throat> It's time to end this trend. That's, that's what our, our feeling is. That's what our philosophy is. That's what the presentation is about. It's time. What can we do to end that trend? We need to end that trend. And it's not something that the government can pass the law to end. It has to be done on an individual basis. You have to choose to end the trend. You have to choose to change your lifestyle that will allow you to avoid one of these chronic conditions. We know what the problem is. The solution is clear. The solution is basically simple. We need to control our weight, we need physical activity, and we need a diet that's rich in whole food nutrients. Whole grains, fresh fruit, Fish, particularly, it contains the omega-3. Good protein. Good fat. If you want to eat fat, eat fish. Get good fat. But we have to assume the responsibility on an individual basis. Then <coughs> share that information with everyone else. It's got to be a, what do you call it, ground root uh, uh, attempt, you know, you can't set wait for the government to, to do it. There, in the U.S., for example, and I'll try not to refer to the U.S. too much, particularly considering their uh, political situation right now, uh, there are some cities that are trying to pass a tax on sugar in soft drinks and things like that, you know. So, uh, but government can't control that. I mean. What, what will happen is they increase the tax on sugar to make the, the soft drink cost more money. It hadn't stopped smoking. Uh-huh. They've increased tax on the cigarettes so much, you know, but it still hadn't stopped. It won't stop the parents from buying these for their children. Oh, that's another tangent. I've got to get back on the subject. <clears throat> Sounds easy, right? The solution is clear. And it sounds easy that we should uh, increase our diet of whole food, nutrients, et cetera, et cetera, uh, weight management, physical activity. But it's not, that, it's not that simple practically because the recommendation for a good diet is four to nine servings of whole grain a day, seven plus servings of colorful fruits and vegetables, and omega-3 rich uh, fish two to three times a week, all in one day. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Most of us can't do that. Most of us can't. Most of us won't, won't do that. We could, we could uh, actually do it. And if you hearken back to the old, old days, when I was a child, that's the old, old days, uh, yes, we, we, many of us practiced this. Because Doreen is here shaking her head. Uh, I grew up on a farm. I grew up on a farm in East Texas, a poor, what's referred to as a poor East Texas farm. There was 11 of us children. I have six brothers and four sisters. We worked on the farm. We lived on the farm. And we ate off of the farm. There was many, many days that the only thing we had was grain or fruits and vegetables. We very rarely had any kind of junk food or anything like that. So it can be done, and you can survive, you know. Uh, fruits and vegetable intake in Australia. Now look at this. This, this is a telltale story. Percentage of people that consume a certain amount of fruits and vegetables. See, male and female, of course. Uh, many, none. Then one or less. So you only get over here to a very small percentage of the population that will consume 
vegetables and fruit. One of the most interesting projects I ever participated in was as soon as I, when I moved back to Texas from California, there was a college student that came to me. He said, I would like for you to help me do an experiment. I said, okay, I'll help you. And we discussed it. And what we did, he was just a high school kid, and I had a computer system that was a little bit uh, ahead of his time. Uh, we did a survey of about 500 high school kids we asked them to write down everything they ate. The teachers gave them extra credit in order to get them to participate. What we wanted to determine is how many fruits and vegetables they ate each day. And there were many, many of those students that did not consume any fruits and vegetables in a typical day. You know, they may have french fries, they may have a little bit of lettuce on a hamburger, uh, you know, and of course, potatoes not, it, it is a vegetable, but it, it doesn't provide much nutrients except for a little vitamin C, a little fiber, a, little carb, a lot of carbohydrates. But we were so disappointed. In fact, this kid made this presentation of this research at a state science fair and won first place. And uh, I don't have, uh, Marie had all those uh, gold medals up there. I didn't even get a gold medal for that. But it just illustrates the point. Fast food consumption in Australia. Now, this, is, this is one of the most damaging or damning uh, pieces of information that we have put together is the fact that your fast food establishments is growing phenomenally and the incidence of consumption of fast food. These are lifestyle change. Now, uh, we're going to talk about some nutrition and some products. And, and our products will help. They will provide the nutrients that you need. But they're not going to replace things like this. They're not going to correct things like this. You see, you don't, don't operate under the false impression. Do not operate under the false impression that you can use our supplements and eat and do anything that you want to prevent these conditions. Do you, you follow what I'm saying? You know, don't take the supplements and say, well, I'm taking such and such a supplement and therefore uh, hamburger and french fries are not going not to bother me. Hamburger and french fries may not bother you as far as vitamins and minerals is concerned, but it may bother you as far as the amount of calories you get and the obesity. Oh, okay, okay, you understand. Nothing new. The problem is obvious. <laughs> the, pro the problem is obvious. We, any one of you could get up here and tell the group the same thing I'm going to tell you because the problem is obvious. We're eating too much of the bad stuff and not enough of the good stuff. Now, the good stuff is the whole grain, uh, fruits and vegetables, omega-3 fats from fish, particularly, uh, too much of the bad stuff is what you get when you go to one of these places. You know, and many of our fast food establishments have tried, they have tried to make improvements. You know, they introduce more, quote, nutritious products. I'm sure that's happened here in Australia, New Zealand. Uh, they try to introduce more whole wheat products. What happens? People don't buy the dang thing. You know, they don't buy them. So what they have to do is they have to discontinue because they're, you can't fault them for what they do. You cannot because they're in business. You, you're in business. What you want to do is you want to sell product and make some money, right? That's your number one objective. Help people, yes. Their objective is to sell products and make money for their stockholders. You can't, you can't hold that against them. And they are the best in the world at manipulating you, us. Drive by McDonald's sometimes. Block away, you can smell the french fries. You can smell the hamburger cooking. Every one of them got a big stack on top 
blowing all that odor in the whole neighborhood, and you got a, you got a, a, a car full of young children that are hungry, or think they're hungry, and you drive by that place. They manipulate you. They manipulate all of us. So the solution, the problem is obvious, and the solution is up to you. You can help yourself by providing the nutrients that the body needs. You can help yourself by watching what you eat. You can help yourself by controlling your weight. And you know, many people that have a weight problem, uh, it kind of reminded me of a story that I used to tell. Uh, you know, I did some private weight control management at one point in my career, and I had this lady that came in, and she said, uh, Dr. Hooper, I need, I need to lose 15 pounds. I said, why? Why do you need to lose 15? Well, I'm, I'm overweight. Yes, it's very obvious she was overweight. Uh, 15 wasn't, wasn't a, a, a good estimate of what she needed to lose. But <laughs> I, she wanted me to help her. And I said, well, first thing I asked her, I said, what's this all about? She said, well, I got my high school reunion coming up. <laughs> you know, and I was looking at some of them old pictures of my, myself and the, my other students and et cetera, or classmates and all. And she said, I've just got to lose some weight. I said, well, when is this high school reunion? She said, two weekends from now. <laughs> That's the way people think. That's the way people think. One lady came in and she was talking about uh, losing weight and she obviously needed to lose some weight too. And uh, I asked her, I said, well, Peggy, uh, do you drink coffee in the morning? She says, no, I don't drink coffee. Coffee's not good for you. I said, well, how do you get your day started? She said, I have a Coke. <laughs> she worked in an office. She had a Coke at break time. She had a Coke, you know, several times during the day. Coffee's not good for her, she said, but she had a Coke for breakfast, you know. So, yes, we have a solution to aid and to help you, and that is, of course, pro-vitality. What is it? Pro-vitality, we'll go through this very quickly. Most of you are familiar with this. Uh, it ain't <clears throat> trillion in grain concentrate. This, by the way, is, is been on our, been in our product line before I even knew the company existed. It has proven to be a very beneficial ingredient, trillion, to enhance the energy production and help protect the cell. Uh, somewhere during this presentation, it's going to refer to a study that we did at Texas A&M, and I'm going to back up and I'll tell you the story. We did do some direct research on trillion grain concentrate uh, at Texas A&M University. Uh, as soon as I joined the company, this was one of the things that I embarked on was to get some confirmation of the benefits of trillion grain concentrate. I had a clot colleague at Texas A&M that was still there, uh, and she was there when I was there. But anyway, we worked out a contract with her, and she did some work on trillion grain concentrate. We took some mice and we gave regular chow, regular mouse food or rat food, whatever you want to call it. And then we took a formula that had included trillion grain concentrate. Now I'll summarize the whole study by just saying that we exercise the animals. We exercise the animals in order to uh, determine their energy level. We didn't destroy the animals. You put them on an exercise wheel, you can do it that way, or you can either uh, put them in a swimming pool and let them swim until they go under a time or two, and then you consider that the end of the experiment. So we, we did it on a treadmill, not cruelty, uh, but it turned out that those that received the trillion and grain concentrate were able to exercise much greater 
three to four to five times as much as those that didn't. So we know it enhances the ability of the cell to generate energy. We know it enhances the membrane ability to allow nutrients to go in and out. That's the reason we tell the story about uh, if you have a healthy mem membrane, you can get nutrients in and waste products out. You know, uh, same story that you've been telling for, for a long, long time. Carotenoid complex. Carotenoid complex is a product that you and I have that we developed a few years ago through quite extensive research that has probably been copied, simulated more than any other product in the marketplace. We have actually had, not to disclose any secrets, we have actually had companies that's tried to buy GNLD or Neolife just primarily because of this product right here. Because we have clinically proven that it will enhance the immune system. Uh, we did that through cooperative research with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Why did the U.S. Department of Agriculture interested in doing research on our carotenoid complex? Very simple. It's derived from fruits and vegetables. What is the Department of Agriculture interested in? Selling fruits and vegetables. So if we could show through cooperative research with them that it enhances a person's health, enhances the immune system, then yes, they're going to be interested in it. So that's how we got hooked up with them. And it did show that we could enhance the immune system 37% uh, after only uh, 20 days. And don't belittle the importance of the immune system because the immune system is now being associated with uh, preventing cancer. Uh, and I was just told the group uh, yesterday, I was just reading an article uh, while I've been over here that I had cut out of a magazine because I don't get a ch I can't, don't have time to read them all. So when I travel, I get a chance to read. And depression, something as simple, not, depression is not simple, don't misunderstand me. But no association has ever been made between the immune system and depression, as far as I know, but they are now showing that if you have a faulty immune system, it releases too much of the cytokines, which has an effect on the serotonin and everything else in the brain, resulting in uh, depression. So uh, there are benefits associated with fruits and vegetables. There are benefits associated with carotenoids, products like this, our carotenoid complex, that we haven't even been able to identify yet. Omega-3, salmon oil plus. You know, we started with this product many years ago, uh, and it was well-known fact that when we first started, uh, there was only three significant omega-3 fatty acids identified that proved to be beneficial at that point in time. But over the years, uh, we continue to do research on salmon oil and see what kind of uh, omega-3 fats were present. Then we start doing research on those individual omega-3 fats, and we find out that some of the more insignificant omega-3 fats are just as important as those three that we started out with, you know. So I guess what I'm trying to convey to you is that when you talk about whole food nutrition, you have to have whole food nutrition. And what I mean by that is uh, some companies will put those three, same three omega-3 fats in their product and try to call it whole food. It's not. It's not. Same. Same thing with vitamin E. If you go back and look at our vitamin E store, the uh, first uh, vitamin E was alpha omega. Took off for all. Yes, my brain goes to sleep every once in a while. But now, as you know, there's been about eight different isomers that have been identified. So when you talk about uh, vitamin E, 
GNLD vitamin E, you're talking about whole food vitamin E. All those vitamin E isomers that have been identified from that source. Essential vitamins and mineral complex. Uh, you know, there's more to nutritional needs than just the omega-3 and et cetera, et cetera. We know that the vitamins and minerals are uh, very, very important. Uh, when I did my postdoc at the University of Texas, I worked for a guy named Carl Folkers, F-O-L-K-E-R-S. Look him up sometimes in some of your uh, scientific databases. You will see that he was one person that identified and synthesized nearly all of the B-complex vitamins. And so, <clears throat> but anyway, complete and balanced proprietary blend, blend of uh, vitamins and minerals to bridge the gap, bridge the gap between your diet and the nutrition that you need. If we survive on fast food, if we survive on those not eating enough whole grains, et cetera, we're going to have a deficiency of vitamins we're going to have a deficiency of minerals. And so what we're looking at is this product bridging this gap between the diet you eat and the nutrition you should get. You know, you got a lot of sales tools. You just have a lot of sales tools to, to uh, get people involved in this business, get people involved in what you're doing. Uh, it is power pack nutrition, of course. Uh, you know that. All this and more in one 30-day supply, okay? Uh, by the way, this little slide is pointing out that the nutrients contained in the pro-vitality is equivalent to 15 kilograms of whole grain, 36 kilograms of raw fruits and vegetables, 10 servings of omega-3 rich food every day. That's good. That's good. That provides the nutrients that you need. But you still need to focus on yourself individually as to what you can do to control your weight and mainly to help prevent disease such as diabetes. Healthy start for an energy filled day. Pro vitality plus a shake. Now, if you are interested in helping control your weight, this is a good, this is a good way to start. Good way to start uh, is to substitute something that you like for that big breakfast or that big lunch or whatever. Something that provides the nutrients that your body needs. You, many of us have enough, we have enough reserve energy here, you know, but we can't burn that reserve energy if we don't have the vitamins and the minerals and those other things that are essential to produce the energy. You see what I'm saying? So we can decrease our caloric intake, expect the body to burn the fat, but only if we provide the nutrients that the body needs for the mechanism to produce the energy to burn the fat. You know, I'll, I'll get on, I'll step off here just one more. When I was working on the postdocs at University of Texas, uh, we were working, we had two, three group, two or three groups working. One was working on coenzyme Q. One was working on the hypothalamic hormones, hypothalamic hormones. These are hormones that are produced by the hypothalamus that are trigger factors to the pituitary that has an effect on your metabolic system. We could, we could isolate factors and inject them into animals that would cause them to burn so much calories that their body temperature would go so high we'd have to keep them bathed in ice. We were forcing the mechanism, we were forcing, now our idea Money, money, money. Our idea was to develop something that we could give to people to help them lose weight. Impractical, impractical. 
We could never control it because of the individuality of the individual. The amount that will affect the body temperature in me may be quite a bit different than the amount that affects the body temperature and the caloric burning in someone else. So we couldn't take a chance on that. And I lay awake at night thinking of, boy, if we could have, Fred would, he would be worth a dollar. What's in it? Protein. That's the main thing that's in it. The amino acid, the brain chain amino acid. It is designed to help you control your blood glucose level. If your blood glucose level goes too low, you get devastatingly hungry. If it goes too high, you got diabetes. So you got a, you got a problem there. So what we have done is developed a what we call a threshold control, uh, you know, glycemic response in which we provide those components, including protein, like say amino acid, branch chain amino acid, uh, fiber, et cetera, that allows the body or allows this product to be digested on a slow basis to keep from getting such a spike in the blood glucose level. If the blood, I'll summarize that very quickly too. If the blood glucose level gets too high, there's only one thing that the body can do with it. One thing. Make fat. The body cannot tolerate a high blood glucose level. Like I say, that is diabetes. So if you're normal, and if you normally metabolize sugar, then if your blood glucose level gets too high, it's taken out of the blood, sent to the cell, and the cell can do only one thing with it because it doesn't want it. Glucose in the blood is rather toxic. So what does it do to it? It converts it to fat. And where does it put it? It puts it here, here, here. Why? So that it can be used in the future when you don't eat enough food. But you see, our problem is we don't ever have to go hungry. We always have food available. You know, in the old days, when you, in, in the ancient days, the fat storage mechanism was evolved in order to assure that we would be able to get out there and chase down an antelope. No, seriously, right? Because we may go for days without any food. But now we're being damned because of this evolutionary mechanism that assures that any excess calories that you and I consume end up in the form of fat here and here. Boy, we're trapped. We're trapped. We're trapped because of that mechanism. We're trapped because of the foods we eat. We're trapped because of the fast food, et cetera, et cetera. We're trapped because of the amount of sugar that we consume. We're, we're, we're trapped, but we're not doomed. You see the difference? We got this up here that we can use to help manipulate what we do, why we do it, and how we do it. That's what this up here is for. It's not just for that pretty hair that Doreen has here. It's for us to be able to think, us to be able to make. I gotta move, gotta move. I love to tell stories. One of these days I come over here and do nothing but tell stories. So it's a healthy start to energy, fill the day, okay? Uh, pro vitality along with the newer shake, the life shake, uh, yes. Scientific proof. I'm not going to belabor any of that because you know that when we develop these products, we test them. We usually test them with some outside organization that allows the information to be published. If we go in our laboratory and we do uh, some research and we want to publish it, uh, in all probability, we're not going to be able to successfully do that simply because they think that it's self-serving. So we, 
We combine with research organizations to do the research that we want done, and what you and I do, what you and I do is provide the money. And we let them do the research, let them draw the conclusion, we let them publish the paper, and the only thing we ask them to do is for them, which they have to, they're required to do, is to publish what ingredients are used, what products are used, and if there's a company involved, what the name of the company is. So, Lancet, these are our scientific journals. Uh, at the global level, the most important contribution to the overall burden of diet are low fruit, high sodium, low whole grain, low vegetables, low nuts and seeds, this author concluded. So, uh, you know, just, just to let you know that these are not ideas that I came up with. Uh, protein intake and strokes. Strokes are one of the major problems, one of the five uh, <clears throat> conditions that kill most of us. And what this researcher was able to show was that for every 20 grams of protein that you consume, uh, it decreases the risk of stroke by 26%. Uh, that's not to say go out here and eat nothing but protein, uh, because then you're talking about an imbalanced diet. And that's what we're trying to avoid is an imbalanced diet. And <clears throat> but it, it had clearly been shown that protein does contribute to help prevent uh, stroke. Uh, fast food and low immunity. I think that's a good little story. Uh, many people, many people can fill their caloric needs without the nutrients they need suppressing their immune system. And I think this probably kind of represents that article I referred to earlier, a little state of depression, you know, uh, low immunity. Uh, carotenoids and immune system. This is just a publication, reference to a publication, uh, the, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, uh, talking about the study that we did on carotenoids and, and the immune system, which shows that it didn't enhances the immune system. And don't, don't underestimate uh, what's happening in the immune system studies because if you would just, as I told the group yesterday, if you'll just keep your eye out on newspapers, uh, scientific, popular magazines, uh, news media, you're gonna see more and more references to the benefit of a stimulated immune system. And now that I've mentioned that, <clears throat> you know, to be informed, you don't have to, to read scientific journals. There, there are some very well done consumer publications that puts everything in perspective. Uh, <clears throat> one of the worst places you can get information is off the internet. There is so much uh, misinformation on the internet that I try to avoid it. But anyway, omega-3 enhances the immune system. And, and this is just a reference to a study from the British, British Journal of Nutrition uh, showing that with the enhanced immune system due to the omega-3, you can keep, keep the diseases away or you can keep the infections away or whatever. Uh, carotenoids and diabetes. Uh, <clears throat> this is, to me, this is a very important reference, particularly as it relates to diabetes. I referred earlier, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of here. I referred earlier to the fact that uh, glucose is toxic to the system. Otherwise, diabetes would not be a condition, right? Uh, it can destroy the capillaries, it can destroy the kidneys, it can, it can do many, many things. It is a strong oxidizing agent in the circulatory system. <clears throat> so, carotenoids and flavonoids are strong antioxidants. So if I were a person that had type two diabetes, I would make sure that I was getting all the carotenoids and flavonoids available. Not excessive, but I would make sure that I would consuming those every day to help protect from the oxidative damage that the sugar can do by being oxidized in, 
the circulatory system. I think that's the reason you see we're seeing these kind of reports whereby carotenoids are beneficial for the diabetic. Uh, Omega-3 in diabetics, same thing, enhancing the immune system. Uh, supplement with omega-3 fatty acid and DHA help, help restore insulin sensitivity. Many of us have diabetes, but not because we don't produce enough insulin, it's because the, the insulin has become insensitive and therefore it doesn't stimulate the removal of the glucose from the blood system into the cell to be converted to fat to go here. It's all a very vicious little cycle. Carotenoids and aging, uh, I'll summarize this next two or three slides, but talking about the fact that on the DNA, the chromosome, we have what's called telomeres, and uh, these telomeres start getting smaller and smaller with aging. Uh, and the research now is showing that there may be a strong relationship between the, the, the shortening of the telomeres and the aging process. So we're all, particularly when you get my age, are interested in trying to find out something that will slow down the aging process, right? So uh, carotenoids have been shown to be very beneficial in maintaining, maintaining the, the telomeres because normally they get shorter and shorter. So <clears throat> omega-3 intake linked to younger biological age in older adults. Hey, hey, I like that. I like that. We're, most of us in here are older adults. So we need some, some help. So carotenoids and DNA protection. That's what I'm talking about. Same thing. Protection against the, uh, the telomere. Protection against oxidative damage to the DNA. This is the direction that the aging research is going. What can we do to affect the changes in the DNA that causes me and you to not only look older, but to feel older? So a healthy start to an energy field day. <clears throat> Pro-vitality, protein shake. Let me give you one other little piece of advice. Diabetes is probably the most devastating condition in any of our developed countries including Australia, New Zealand. Type 2 diabetes. If I had type 2 diabetes, this is what I would do. I'd go home after this meeting. I would get everything in my house that had sugar in it. I would put it in a big bag, big bag. Then I'd take that big bag of all these sugar-containing products, I'd take it over to my neighbor. <laughs> Not for the neighbor to use, but for the neighbor to destroy. Because you do not have the courage to be that abusive to sugar. Do you follow what I'm saying? Just, just, you, you don't have to go to that extreme. You don't have to go to that extreme. But every time you think about eating something or buying something that contains sugar and you have type 2 diabetes, I hope you think of that little analogy, that little story. And if you do accidentally buy something that you shouldn't be consuming, take it to your neighbor. See? This is what we have, brain power, brain power, to make those decisions. Take the information, share it with everyone, share it with people. Don't, uh, don't talk to a potential customer and expect them to buy every one of your products. Focus on something that you know that that person may need. Look at their lifestyle. Get inside their head. How do they eat? What do they eat? Do they exercise? Do they ever eat fish? Do they ever eat whole grain? You know, do they ever eat fruits and vegetables? You know, don't try to change their lifestyle all at once, and don't try to sell them every product you've got. Start out with Pro Vitality Pack. 
Start out with that. You know, and let them start using it, and you're going to find, they're going to find that they're going to feel better, they're going to look better, and then the next thing you know, they're going to come back to you because you know what they'll do? Is they'll start doing some reading, and they'll start listening to the radio. They'll start listening to the people on TV. They'll start listening to uh, information that they otherwise would have been ignoring because they don't give any credibility to it. But now that they feel better, they look better, uh, they will start paying attention to some of these things. And then the next thing you know, they're going to hear uh, on TV that uh, omega-3 is especially good for the immune system or omega-3 is especially, and they may come back and want some additional. You see what I'm saying? Get inside the man, the mind. Talk to them, discuss. Don't push, don't push, you know. Like I was saying earlier, <clears throat> after 42 years, Anna is beginning to understand this business, <laughs> you know. And after all these many years that I've been associated with Neolife, GNLD, et cetera, after all these many years that I have been in the research community working on these particular products and ingredients and all, uh, <clears throat> I think I'm beginning to realize also how important they are. And the thing that is most disappointed, as I said earlier, is that we can't get this information through the parent's head to the child. And if you think we have a problem now, you wait 15 or 20 years from now. Uh, and I, <clears throat> I hope that some of you will remember some of the comments I've made. I've, I've enjoyed being here. I'm looking forward to our, our meetings out in the field. And I hope that I've given you something to think about a little bit, you know, and uh, just take care of yourself. Start with yourself. Then ask people to join you in what you're doing. Thank you very much.